Hey guys. Okay, so in the last video, I uh, left off where I had been working on that left wing. I had gotten the, all the wires run and that shark bite tubing and closed up the back end of it. Of course, my intent was to actually be able to close up the entire wing, but then of course we found out that no, we can't do that yet. Uh, not until we have all the information we need to know where we put in the, the autopilot, where we put in that heated pitot tube controller you know, what, what else does, do we need to have in the wing? Uh, and so still researching some of that, uh, which I'll talk to much later in this video, but here in the background, you see me, I'm basically doing the same work on the other wing. I'm again, running shark bite. I'm running all my wires and whatnot to include a run of that shark bite and some wires out to the bell crank rib. That is where I'm going to put my autopilot servo. Um, and then I'm closing up the back end, doing all the various drilling and stuff that you have to do to put rivets in. You'll get used to it once you start putting lots of rivets in. It's real easy. It's just tedious. Um, one thing I wanted to talk to real quick, I get this question a lot, um, and it came up again the other day twice, so I thought I'd go ahead and address it, and that had to do with cameras. Um, a lot of people are asking me, you know, um, little cameras like this, you know, am I going to build something into the wing, like something down in the wing that is a, a viewport out to see the world from some sort of embedded camera system? Um, and my answer to that, I thought long and hard, like originally I was thinking about actually building a dedicated camera system into the plane. And I, I think I've come to the conclusion that no, I'm not going to do that. The reason for that is very simple. Camera technology changes all the time. One, two, that's more wires and stuff that could go wrong. You know, things that are in the plane that we don't necessarily need in the plane. And three, you know, if I'm going to have some sort of covering over the lens, I mean, over time, unless it's glass, uh, that covering is going to fade with the sun. So you'd have to build glass into it, like a glass portal or something like that. I mean, it's just a lot of extra work when what most people do is they just built a mount that sits on the outside, right? That, you know, just something that, that, that just holds the camera above the wing or wherever they're trying to place it. And I think that's the route I'm going to go. Um, I probably am going to build a number of extra nut plates into the fuselage underside. So I have that like sort of downward forward view uh, as well as at the wing tip, something that, that I just, I can, I can literally just walk up and screw it on. I don't have to worry about suction cups or something like that. It's actually, you know, firmly in place. And then probably I would just use a standard camera mount. So um, I've thought about it and I think that's the route I'm going to go. Uh, I have seen one guy who had up in his vertical stabilizer, he had kind of a window that he had fabricated in there for a camera system. And it looked, you know, it looked like it worked fine. That's just a lot of extra work. So I don't really want to do that. So uh, I'm all about getting this damn thing out the door. Let's finish this build already, right? So anyways, that's what's going on. Still working in the background. And today I'm going to work on uh, getting the bell crank rib uh, the bell crank actually in place temporarily so that I can test the travel and know exactly how much room I have in those ribs. And I'm going to talk to that here shortly, but first I got to find a part. So I've said a number of times that organization is really, really important. Um, I temporarily wanted to add these, uh, bell crank assemblies into the wing and get them so they actually are functioning as they're going to function because I want to be able to test where I'm putting some stuff in the wing so they won't bind with these. Uh, to that end, one of the things you have to get is this bushing. This bushing goes inside this, this uh, powder-coated piece, which then allows you to put the bolt through. So there's, there's lots, of, uh, lots of movement, freedom of movement there. But I couldn't find these. Um, it took me a good 20 minutes to look for these. Uh, and I went through every single bag probably four times, which includes the bags they were actually in. Um, and that's just the nature of things. There's so many parts that you're going to go through uh, the same bag multiple times trying to find a thing and probably pick it up, look right at it and go, nope, that's not it. And keep going and eventually come back to it. So just know that sometimes you're going to spend a lot of time looking for something when it's right in front of your dang face. But anyways, so yeah, this guy goes in here and that gives you that movement um, like that. So, so now we're going to go test it on the wing itself with all the various bits and pieces to make sure I have a place to put the uh, pitot heat controller, you know, make sure my wires aren't binding or any of that other stuff. Wee, fun, fun, fun. 
Okay, so to build this temporarily, to put together this bell crank rib assembly and all the stuff that's in there, I have to basically build all the parts. So what this is, this is, so there's this thick tube, right, that, it, that runs the entire length of the wing. That is a, uh, they call that a torque tube, I believe. And basically it's what moves back and forth when you control, uh, control, you know, when you, when you apply controls, it moves back and forth. That movement then goes over this bell crank, which then transitions that movement uh, 90 degrees up to the aileron. The big one is the torque tube. The little one is the aileron push rod. Those are the two things I have to build in order to test this. And what you're seeing me behind me do is to do just that. I'm building those two parts. Basically you take a really long piece of, uh, of this tube, you put in, they have these little, um, I don't know what they're called, these little caps that kind of fit inside. And then you drill through it a number of times and you uh, use a blind rivet to fasten it. Well, the way I found to make sure that I drilled those holes correctly is here you can see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm literally drawing on my bucking bar, which happens to be exactly the correct length. It's exactly four inches. And I put little circles on there to uh, know exactly where those holes are going to be. Uh, and then I go back over it with, with that little thing that inserts and I, I draw a line on it so I know exactly how far, so it's halfway between uh, the end cap and where the part stops inside. And then I just drill holes. Um, real simple, but it worked really well. And then it's a matter of doing it four times because you got to do it both ends. And then with the aileron push rod, again, it's something very similar. Uh, instead of eight, it's just four holes alternating. And yeah, real simple. It took all damn day, <laughs> but a real simple thing to do for that testing. And then the results were actually really good. And I'll let myself from the past talk to that now. Okay, so after much cajoling, finagling, and no small amount of cursing, uh, I have the various push rod assemblies and the bell crank rib temporarily in place. Um, my goal again was to make sure that I'd be able to put something in here, know exactly what the travel was of this particular uh, hardware so that I knew if I had room to put other stuff in here. And it turns out I do. I, I do. Uh, so if you see here, the travel of this is actually not a lot. Um, and over here, I have ample room to put this heated pedo controller right there. And then the wires, I've got plenty of room to put the wires. So, so yeah, I think that's going to be good. I think that's a good place for it. There's a door that goes right here, so I'll have access to it if it ever does go out. Um, and I'm happy with it. Regarding the autopilot, I talked to a number of people, and everyone I've talked to says either the autopilot will go out of the wing or in the bell, uh, bell crank rig, basically exactly right here, but I can put it in the other wing. So plenty of room and I'm supremely happy with that. So I might want to reevaluate. Um, <clears throat> this is where I had originally wanted to put the heated pedo tubes. That's, that's this guy and it'll go, you know, through here and pointing forward. And then we've already determined that we're going to put this guy here. That's the controller for the heated pedo tube. The concern I have now is with all of this stuff here, it's gonna be in the way of this. Now, I could inject this up in here and bend it over really sharply so it doesn't get in the way of this, but I almost would rather have a kind of a gentle curve instead of like a sharp curve so as to, you know, not pinch the tube or anything like that. And so I'm thinking I might move this out one rib and have it here. Now, unfortunately, Putting it here is not an option, or, or even here, like inside this space is not an option. This is, this is your bell crank rib housing area. This is the bell crank rib. And there's nut plates here, so there's no, you can't really put this there, but I could put it right here. So that means it's going to be farther out on the wing, which, meh, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Um, I don't think it should be a problem. If you guys know, let me know. I mean, the the pedo tube can be 
as long as it's, as I understand it, it can be pretty much anywhere on the wing. It's generally kind of in the middle. So long as it's not within the prop wash, I think I should be good. So having it out here, which is closer to the edge, I mean, there's, there's still plenty of wing that way, but having out here, I think is okay. And it definitely keeps us from buying any sort of possible binding uh, with, this, with this torque tube. Oops. Um, so yeah, I think I might have to move it, but I'd be interested in, in what your thoughts are. If you think that's a bad idea for some reason, going the other way is still a problem for the same reason. You know, this, th this structure will uh, potentially rub or get in the way or something, and that's not good. So I think I need to go that way with it and put it here. That's why we did this, right? We put this in here temporarily so we can test for exactly this stuff. So I think that's a good decision. Thoughts? So while I wait for an answer to my question there, uh, hope either through my own research or from one of you glorious people out there, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the inboard most set of skins and get, uh, get that all dimpled up and actually affixed to the wing. Uh, I believe that I can go ahead and get it completely done, attached to the wing and be good to go. And then do the outboard wing once we have all these questions and answers in place. And so with that, guys, that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing, hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. If you want to receive notifications every time I create one of these, click that bell. If you really like what I'm doing, jump on over my Patreon page. You can, for a low, low price of a dollar a month, you can actually help support this project. And finally, if you want to build one of these airplanes, if you use my reference number, which is down in the comments below, fans will send me a hundred bucks. Thanks a bunch, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to get that outro down to 20 seconds. It's tough.